welcome back to the Lackluster channel. Months ago, I featured Barry Cooper and his fake grow house operation that busted the Odessa police and led to the release of Yolanda Madden. I smoke, but I don't inhale. To catch up, that video can be seen using the links below. In that presentation, I mentioned that he continued with his cop busters operations until his wife and he were arrested several times and had their child taken from them, prompting Barry to flee the country. This video will show what brought about those arrests and how he got to where he is now. After his tenure as a narcotics officer, Barry used his experiences and training to become an expert witness. During one case, he was brought on to provide testimony that an officer caused his canine to false alert. The incident was captured on Captain Nisor's dashcam video. Barry found that during the traffic stop, the officer ran his canine across a single door 12 times before the dog finally alerted, when a reasonable alert should have been given within a couple passes. The officer also appeared to be manipulating the dog's toy. The case was mysteriously dropped after Williamson County prosecutors learned that Barry was going to testify. However, still beaming from his success in Odessa, he couldn't shake the idea of an officer potentially cheating for conviction, and pointed the cop buster crew at Captain Nasser. I get a lot of complaints on cop busters that this guy does illegal searches and he's a crook. And I've got some videotapes of some of his canine alerts that I was an expert witness on and he makes his dog false alert. The plan was simple. First, Barry got a hold of a soft lunchbox and began filling it with items for the operation. Miscellaneous items that we're gonna throw in, a pair of socks, a flashlight, things like that. This was meant to give the bag character and would keep any speculation of a setup out of Captain Nasser's head because the next few items are a bit more suspicious. We have $45 here that we're going to plant inside of the bag to see if the cop is honest or not. So we're going to mark this money, place these two together. This would allow Barry to match the bills if the officer was found to be in possession of them. But the next item was placed there to make the officer feel better about his potential choices. Besides the marked money is what will appear to the police officers as a pipe. We're not gonna smoke any through this, but if we place the pipe in with the money, they can't claim it wasn't money. The last item would ensure that if the officer took the bait and if the bag happened to vanish, when Barry confronted him, he wouldn't be able to simply say that it didn't exist. And we needed a bag that would conceal one of these nice GPS tracking devices through this little trap door and mount the hidden GPS. Finally, to seal the plan and ensure that any reasonable officer would feel obligated to turn in the bag for evidence, the next item was most crucial. When I ran search warrants and I worked highway interdiction, I often found uh, pieces of paper that showed how much money each individual owed that particular dealer. That's called a ledger. So we're gonna place one of those in this bag as well as soon as we get it finished. So that cop that picks this bag up with the hidden GPS and he finds the money, the pipe, and the ledger, he will automatically know that this is money. Of course it's not, it's a cop buster trap. With the bag stocked up, their next move was to place it. Roberta, uno, one half, onsa, $300. Kenny, green, owes $200. And down at the bottom, I went ahead and uh, put I-45 to Houston because I want the police officer to think that uh, this bag was left by somebody just passing through on their way to Houston. We also uh, filled it with beers. Every head needs a pair of 3D glasses, peanut butter sandwich, tools and pens, just to kind of give the bag a, a lived with feel. The chosen location was a coin operated car wash in a slow part of town. And in the middle of the night, Barry placed the lunchbox next to the vacuum machine. This is the car wash. Okay, right there is where the bag has been planted. Police. Barry then called the Liberty Hill Police Department's non-emergency line and reported a suspicious bag. Captain Nasser arrived soon after. Mm -hmm. 
The officer removed a few items from the bag and looks through the contents, but ends up leaving everything on the vacuum station. The problem was that the cash had been hidden in the main compartment lid underneath the netting, so it was likely that the officer just didn't see it and must have overlooked the paraphernalia. So Barry made a second call and the officer returned. This time, he searched the area with his vehicle-mounted spotlight and then walked to the dumpster. And after returning to his cruiser, the officer leaves again. This worked. The officer that we were targeting came and picked this bag up. They've got 10, 15 officers at this department and we got lucky. The one man I was after is the one they dispatched out. I watched him walk over to the dumpster. Then he walked from the dumpster back to the proximity of the bag where we had it planted. He spent a, quite a bit of time there. Then he drove away and instead of getting into the highway, he stopped there and had his interior light on like he might have been looking at whatever he had gotten out of this bag. We revisited the dumpster and he threw the bag in the dumpster. So we don't have GPS tracking on him right now. I searched that dumpster thoroughly. There was no money in there. There's the GPS, he threw it away. And guess what, guess what? There's still no money to be found. We've searched these uh, trash cans and these dumpsters thoroughly. No money, no pipe. A police officer, if they find a pipe and money, they're supposed to take everything to the evidence room. So this is a strong, strong indication that this cop kept the money and that he won't report it. In the following days, Barry submitted a records request for the police reports concerning the suspicious bag calls. But of course, no report was made. Time will tell when we confront him and he's going to have to get a, give an account of what he did with that money. Cop Busters then made a second bag and set out to make another drop. Have the bag, hidden GPS, got $45, marked money, pipe with no smoke through it of course, and ledger. With the bag in place, Barry again called the non-emergency line to report it. Officer Jackal responded to the scene and leaves, taking the bag with him. And upon reviewing the GPS data, it was evident that the officer had taken the bag to the police station. A records request subsequently revealed that the bag and its contents, including the cash and paraphernalia, were booked into evidence. With the footage secured, it was time to disclose what they had found to the Liberty Hill Police Department. My wife and I have uh, video evidence of a felony that was committed uh, in Liberty Hill. What's your, what's your last name? Uh, I'm going to stay anonymous. I'll ID to Captain Nosar. That's who I want to come out because he'll recognize the suspect and I'm going to turn over all the video evidence to him. Officer Rodriguez was the first to arrive. It's all right, we're all unarmed. I've got some uh, felony evidence here of a felony that was committed in your town. This is my uh, film crew. What? For, I'm a journalist. If you're here to complain, I only need to talk to you right now. I have to keep the cameras away from me. Well, I don't want to keep the cameras away. I'm, right. I'm interested in showing you this video. Actually, I need to talk to Captain Nasar because he'll recognize the suspect that committed this crime. Right now, I'm the only one on duty at this time. So, so either you got to deal with me or come back on another day. Officer Rodriguez calls his chief to inform him of what is happening. Tell you what, I talked to my to the chief. He said to go ahead and meet him at the office. Meet him at you the relax office. a little bit, Mr. Rodriguez. Hey, I'm not much. Well, I don't care. That still looks a little weird. We're all nonviolent citizens, and you doing all that's a little I strange. Keep my distance, okay? Okay. I said has a personal area. I have mine. Okay. I talked to my chief, he said it's okay to meet with him, give him about to about 4.30, okay, and you meet him at the office. Is that okay? Yeah, at 4.30? Right. At 4.30, meet him at the office at the PD, all right? Okay, man, appreciate right. it. Yep. After much disagreement about the filming, the chief agreed to meet Barry at his office. Yes, sir, you're to report a crime? Yeah, actually what this is, I have your captain, Nasar, on video. 
committing a felony. Okay. So it's one of your officers. Let's talk. I, I'm not going to go in unless we have a camera because no, that's no, the only no, way I feel no, safe. You don't need a camera. Yes. Well, why don't we need a camera? Why can't we have a camera? If there's nothing to hide. There's nothing to hide. Come on in. Okay. Your officer stole money, and I've got the video evidence of that. No, I, I would bring one, but we're not going to have a circle. Okay, we can have one camera. Okay, cool. That's excellent. I'm uh, Barry Cooper with Cop Busters with the K. This is my wife, Candy. Have you heard of our organization? Uh, if not of the organization. I think I recognize your name. Okay. The chief eventually agreed to view the footage, during which he made his agitation known. Is that your captain? And a black charger. Oh, well, it's my it's one of my officers. I can recognize the uniform I'm still trying to patrol dog in the back. I know it's the captain. Okay, as soon as I see his face, I can tell. Well it'll all be on the dispatch logs that he's the one who got dispatched right. here on that yeah, day. Yeah, that, that's I did recognize his face after. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that is your captain. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay, now he's walking away from the dumpster. And the bag is gone. Okay. We recovered the bag out of the dumpster, but the money, the pipe, and the ledger was gone. We did this same thing to a Lockhart Police Department. It's on here. He took it straight to the evidence room. When we filed reports to open records request, we're right here. Oh, I'm sorry. I talk when, loud. Yeah, I talk loud because I'm hard of hearing. Well, I'm on this side, so we're sitting on the wrong side. Okay. Are you okay, man? I mean, can I just be me? Damn, I'm not. Yeah, I know, but yeah. Okay, just chill, man. Everything I'm doing, you're criticizing. I'm not it. criticizing. You're well, just talking, let me man. talk. We're, we're, we're face okay, to face. Okay, well, this is how I talk, bro. I mean, this is how I, this is what I do. It's worked. And we have other video evidence as well. So, we went over to Lockhart and did the okay. same thing. I'm not well, okay. Lockhart. When I, about this one. You're not concerned about anything I have to say. Yes, sir. I'm concerned about your... You're not an investigation. You're not letting me, live, let, let me well, even Lockhart talk. has nothing to do with this. Okay, it does when I explain the differences in the officer's behavior. Sure it does. When I filed for the open records request in your city, <laughs> Officer Nassar never made a report of that bag, <laughs> finding that bag or that money. He stole the money. The Lockhart police officer, we're going to leave here, give him an award, he made a report and turned everything in, and the bag was in the evidence room like he was supposed to. I'm not concerned about the lock I'm concerned about what you're accusing my officer of. I'm accusing him of tampering with evidence, which is a felony, and stealing $45. I will say I do appreciate you bringing any concern to my attention, but uh, I mean, this isn't good news for me, obvious. But uh, I said, uh, you do a service, so. Hey, thanks, man. Okay. I appreciate it. Did you get that? Despite the friendly farewell, Captain Nazar was never charged. Instead, the Williams County Sheriff's Office executed a search warrant on Barry Cooper's home, confiscating his cameras, videos, and computers, and arresting Barry Cooper. You have to open the door. If she sees cops, she won't unless I tell her to. And then she will. But it's our rule. We don't open the door to fucking cops. Why you gotta cuss me like that? I'm not cussing. I said fucking cop. Oh, no, bro. Unfortunately, you I'm a cop. You know what I mean? Des you deserve huh? a fuck you because I'm in handcuffs. It's only fair. If you got me in handcuffs, the least you can do is take a fuck you because I promise <laughs> I'm in a worse position right now than you. So don't whine and complain about that. Uh, <laughs> I'm a civil disobedient motherfucker. <laughs> I will be civil about my disobedience. It'll never be violent, but I'm gonna talk some shit. Yeah. He was charged with filing a false police report, and at the same time, the Texas Rangers opened an investigation concerning the fake grow house raid. While he fought the charge, child services took his son, declaring him and his wife to be unfit parents for, quote, creating an environment where children believe the government was out to harm them. He was eventually reunited, and because his phone calls to report the suspicious packages were made to a non-emergency number, Barry was able to plead down to a $500 fine and drop charges. But knowing that they were still under investigation for the grow house operation, Barry fled the country. 
Today he continues to testify as an expert witness and hosts his own show, one that I was supposed to co-host with him but couldn't because of time differences. Ever ever touch your hands to your head when answering questions with a police officer. That's the number one sign of deception. But on top of everything he does is his new group, the NGB 400, where members work with Barry personally, helping review real evidence and freeing actual prisoners. It's been a dream of mine to build a hands-on activist group that doesn't involve fighting, but actually helps others and the community. My dream is to have 400 smart, polite, and classy members that help me free drug war prisoners without firing the proverbial shots. I'm glad you got up, dressed up, and showed up to become a member of the NGB 400 group. Peace, love, and never get busted. If you're looking to participate in some form of activism to help free non-violent victims in cases similar to the ones you've witnessed in this video, check out his links in my video description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. If you have a video, use the submit link in the description or pinned comment. If you enjoyed this one, subscribe and hit the bell for future content and check out our other channels, Lady Lackluster and The Odd Side. Remember to like, share, and leave a comment about what you think of this interaction. It's the easiest way for you to help expose corruption and misconduct. Merchandise is available using the links below. Join the Lackluster family for just a buck if you'd like to further support the channel. Get a Lack logo next to your name, custom emotes, and early access to videos. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. All links are down below.